before we get into today's story, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. History class teaches you about the madness of medieval kings, queens, and conquerors. You read about every treaty that was signed, territory that was acquired, and regime that was overthrown. However, very little detail is given to characterize the day-to-day -day aspects of life of the people that lived during this time. Surely it can be inferred that, for most, it wasn't a great life when compared to the technological and societal advancements of modern times. However, today we'll be going over 10 of the more idiosyncratic details that define the day-to-day -day of early Western culture. Number 10. Water was rarely, if ever, consumed. Simply, it wasn't safe to drink out of most water sources in medieval Europe. Spring water was an option, but even that was risky given the lack of a sanitary plumbing system at the time. And without a reliable way to easily purify drinking water, most turned to the most purified liquid of this era, alcohol. It wasn't uncommon to begin drinking beer or wine fresh out of bed in the morning and all throughout the day, meaning that in all likelihood at any given time, most individuals were in some capacity intoxicated on a day-to-day -day basis. Number 9. The slaughter of animals was outlawed in London. King Edward III was forced to make the decision during his reign to ban the production of meat for consumption. The reason? The remains were becoming so overwhelmingly foul, the entire city reeked of rotting carcasses. The original solution to this issue was to dump remains into nearby bodies of water, which inevitably created another set of unsafe conditions for anyone attempting to enter, or worse, consume these waters. Number 8. People used to use cemeteries as a place to hang out. This one is especially illogical. Overdevelopment likely contributed to this phenomenon, but in any case, not only did individuals regularly rendezvous in local cemeteries, but productions of plays, political elections, and even trials were hosted here. It was also a common spot for businesses to set up impermanent operations because cemeteries were exempt from taxation, and as a result of all of the people coming through, prostitutes would promote their services among the tombstones. Number seven, people were really valued having their rotting corpses being put on display. There was a common casket option after death that was referred to as a transit tomb. A transit tomb would allow a corpse to remain on full display as it went through the stages of decomposition. Furthermore, it was open, so viewers could see snakes and other animals eat the body. Why this was ever a thing is extremely unclear. Number six, they had bizarre but not gruesome forms of punishment for lawbreakers. Though the medieval times are often the subject of discussion when referencing horrific methods of punishment, not all forms of punishment were so insidious. One of the more seemingly comical forms of punishment consisted of making the criminal walk around in public wearing a scary animal mask, professing their crime. In some cases, they were forced to wear a badge displaying the nature of their crime for the rest of their lives in a scarlet letter type of situation. Number five, they had really bizarre forms of birth control. As contraceptives were in their infancy at this time, and the biology behind conception was rather understudied, this area was one that consisted more of guesswork than anything. It was somehow derived that things such as wearing the testicles of a weasel, the uterus of a donkey, or the bones of a black cat around a woman's neck were the most effective form of birth control. And in a certain respect, I guess this makes sense. Number four, mental illness was not handled well. In medieval Europe, any form of mental illness was attributed to demonic possession, and along with exorcisms and beatings, a common practice to cure mental illness was to drill a hole in the patient's head. The rationale was the demons needed a way to escape. On the bright side, the mental illness was eliminated. Sadly, so was the person being subjected to this insane form of, quote, medical treatment. Number three, they had a bizarre method for cleaning clothes. Though naturally they didn't have access to the detergents, washers, or dryers of today's time, it is assumed that they did have access to some form of soap. And though this is true, it was not used to clean clothes. Arguably the opposite of soap was used. They used a concoction of human ash and urine. The infrequency with which clothes were washed at this time made it so that the amount of human ash accessible to any given individual was sufficient to get the job done. Number two, religious figures were viewed as the ultimate healers. Medicine was in its infancy at this time, and much like the previously described state of birth control, there was a lot of guesswork involved. One guess that resulted in an extremely misguided practice was that if a religious figure licked a person afflicted with a gruesome skin disease, such as leprosy, it would heal the condition. 
Two noteworthy instances of this were when St. Mary Magdalene of Pazzi licked the sores of the ill and even sucked maggots out of wounds. Similarly vile was that St. Angela of Foligno drank water she had used to bathe the leper's feet with and purposely swallowed one of his scabs. Number one, men's shoes were used as a way to display their wealth. Fashion was a primary method that people would use to relay their status in life. However, in modern times, we might do this in the form of brand names. Men of medieval Europe would do this by having the longest shoes possible. It became so extreme at a certain point that shoes had to be reinforced with whalebone just to support the length of their toe boxes and make walking even a possibility. Though viewed through a modern lens, it seems as if people of this era were entirely insane. However, when considering the limited information, technology, and precedent they had to work with, it is only logical that they made certain glaring mistakes in carrying out their day-to-day -day lives. These are just some of the more egregious errors that allow us today to laugh at the practices of the people that came before us.